my name is Kelly Brooks. I'm from Illinois, small town, uh, about 800 people. I was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer. I would say November 1st. Wasn't expecting that for my 50th birthday. I own two self-employed businesses. I started flipping houses, mm, I would say five years ago. I'm on number nine. I'm a tear out girl, so I do most of the construction work, pulling things out myself, such as drywall, cabinets, um, you name it, I've done it. I can do everything but electrical. I also own a tumbling gym with 100 athletes, and we compete competitively throughout the state of Illinois, and then we attend nationals once a year. One, two, three! So I was just kind of settling into the whole accepting the empty nest thing and getting over it after my son went off to college three years ago kind of getting into a groove. I love to travel to Florida. And that's actually when I started seeing signs of something wasn't right um, in June. My first symptoms were I had blood in my stool. Um, I was actually in Florida in June celebrating my 50th birthday with all of my kids. And I kind of chalked it up to maybe it was something that I ate. Maybe it wasn't blood. I kind of talked myself out of it. And then it continually kept happening more and more. Came home. I didn't have anything else than that, than just the blood in my stool, which I knew wasn't normal, but I thought it could be anything, really. I didn't think for a second that it was colon cancer. I came home from my trip, scheduled an appointment with my primary doctor, saw them at the end of June. They told me that they thought it was hemorrhoids. Um, I shouldn't be too worried about it. I again saw them. It continually happened, so I... The blood in my stool, it wasn't necessarily every time at that point. It was probably maybe two or three times a week, but I wasn't losing any weight, so I really wasn't that concerned. Um, concerned enough to continue to call my primary doctor. I again saw them in July. I, or, I wanted blood work to see where my levels were at. Um, my dad actually died of a brain tumor at the age of 56, so I kind of went in for cancer screenings continually once a year but nothing came up. Um, I had this blood work done. My MPV level was the only thing that flagged low. I think it was a seven and they were not concerned about that at all. So I took it with a, I'll just keep coming back until somebody gives me some answers. I went back two times in July, two times in August. They finally sent me to a specialist in October, a gastro specialist. Um, he saw me and he said he would schedule me in for colonoscopy, but not really to be too worried. I did at that point start to have some cramping in my stomach and maybe a little bit of bloating. But again, I just turned 50 in August. So I thought maybe it was menopause. Maybe it was just getting old. I really didn't think. I mean, I guess I associated cancer with low energy, losing weight, um, just not feeling well. And I felt really good, even though I was continually having blood in my stool. I've never gotten a call back to go get a colonoscopy, and here I am three months later after being diagnosed stage three colon cancer. So that's a little frustrating because nobody would take me seriously until I went and got another opinion. I just wasn't feeling hurt. Like nobody, I knew something was wrong. I didn't know what was wrong. Um, I'm pretty good at being able to tell what's going on with my body. I'm very in tune with my body, my feelings, my thoughts. I just felt like I was being dismissed. Um, they just, kept telling me over and over again, it could be hemorrhoids. I'm like, it's not hemorrhoids. I've never had hemorrhoids in my entire life. Even when I gave birth to three children who are now adults, um, I knew it wasn't hemorrhoids. Um, then I did start to get a little bit bloated more towards the end of October, I noticed. But again, I chalked it up to maybe it was menopause. Maybe it was, you know, I guess I almost talked myself out of my symptoms because nobody would listen to what I had to say. And I've been going to the same doctor for years. It's not like I didn't trust them, um, but I had to trust, trust myself more. And I knew something wasn't right. She scheduled me in for CAT scans of the, everything from the waist up to rule that out. And then we would go the, to do the waist down. And they found a mass, a large mass in my colon. They set me up for a colonoscopy. Um, I did the colonoscopy prep actually on my favorite holiday, which is Halloween, which is awful. Um, the prep didn't go well for me because I'm a puker. I was not really pooping like I was supposed to. I was more throwing up. Um, so we did the colonoscopy on November 1st, and the doctor came in. 
Well, after I woke up, they took us to a little room. So I figured it was not good news. Um, he said it was 100% cancer. I said, okay, let's go to Applebee's. I'm hungry. <laughs> My daughter was devastated. I just thought, okay, we'll just deal with it however we need to deal with it. He said that the tumor was so large that they could not get the camera through on my colonoscopy, even though they changed the camera to a NICU baby size, that the mass was too big. Um, clearly, I didn't really understand that because I'm kind of a tiny girl. So if I had such a large mass, how could I have not known that? Um, I guess the mass ended up being 11 inches big. Uh, so when he told me I had cancer, I was just like, okay let's go what do i do now and he was like urgent like we need to go now you need to go get you need to see a surgeon you need to schedule this and that after i was told it was 100 percent cancer and it was time to see the surgeon he wasn't too concerned about getting me in for surgery right away just because the the tumor was so slow growing that i could have had it for you know he said five to ten years and they assured me that i didn't do anything wrong because nobody would get a colonoscopy really at the age of 45 with zero family history and i didn't have any family history of this so again i really probably wouldn't have even i mean it's kind of sounds silly but my friends and i had made a pact to get colonoscopies at some point because my best friend's husband died of colon cancer so that makes the story even a little bit crazier but uh after I saw Dr. Carey, things moved really quickly. Um, I met with my surgeon, Dr. Modi, who is phenomenal. He didn't push it to go too soon. He gave me a couple of weeks. He told me to go live my life. Um, he knew the tumor was rather large, uh, but he was very confident that he would get it out with the robotic arm hands. Um, surgery should take about three hours. So he gave me two weeks to go do whatever I wanted to do. Um, I really wanted to travel, but my kids wouldn't let me do anything. Went in for surgery on November 21st, and that's when things got like really real because the surgery didn't go the way I expected it to go. I kind of thought for some reason I was going away for a spa. Like I packed books and things and I was going to recover fast and it didn't happen that way. So we went in for surgery on November 21st. It was supposed to last three hours. Apparently it lasted seven um, because my prep didn't go well. So when he had me on the table, it was supposed to be laparoscopic, robotic um, for incisions to get the tumor out, but he ended up having to open me up uh, because I started to fill up with poop. And he ended up taking my colon out of my body, setting it on the table, fixing it and putting it back in. The strange thing is I remember going in at 7.30 and I had no doubt it was gonna go very easy, um, 7.30 in the morning. And when I came out of it and I kind of started to wake up, there were so many people in the room and it was dark outside. So I knew something I knew something wasn't right, like it didn't go as well as he had expected it to go. Um, he actually ended up having to call in a colleague to help him deal with filling up with all of the feces, I guess is what you say. So when I woke up, I wasn't really too happy because I had the incision. Um, but again, I didn't have the, the poop bag. I didn't have to worry about that because there was a certain way I was going to live my life after this. After I was released from the hospital, um, I had some time to... We'll look for some oncologists. Unfortunately, I live in an area where they are, there's just not a lot. And there's not a lot that specialize in colon cancer. Um, I was determined to find at least three different people so I could figure out what the best course of action was for me because I'm not, I don't follow everybody else's rules. I don't, I do what I want when I want to. I'm extremely independent and stubborn and it's not a one size fits all. So I wasn't a candidate for radiation. Um, the first oncologist that I saw was actually pretty fantastic. He recommended chemo um, six times over a three-month period, but he was more nonchalant about it. Do it or don't do it. Um, it didn't really matter to him. I wasn't comfortable with chemo at first, um, and I said I'd get back to him, obviously. And then I went to my second opinion, which was the University of Iowa Cancer Care Clinic in Iowa City. And I met with an amazing doctor, Naomi Fay, and she sat me down and she said, you need to do chemo. And, and also backing up a little bit, my surgeon was really um, hell-bent on me doing chemo as well, because I was like, I don't think I'm going to do it. And he said, if it were my mother or my daughter or my sister, family member, I would want them to do chemo. Deuces. Basically, it's like an insurance policy. It's preventative care at this point. Um, 
yes, my surgeon got all the cancer. It had not metastasized to any of my other organs. Thank God for as long as they think that I had it. Um, but she recommended six months, 12 rounds of chemo. Uh, I didn't want to hear that. Uh, I, I had told my children, like I'd said, that you're adults, that if my scans were clear and it had not metastasized and my blood work looked good, I was just going to live my life. And they gave me hmm, maybe five years and I was okay with that. Um, I know I just turned 50. I could do another 20. Uh, but I just, I, I wasn't comfortable with the chemo thought. I came home from Iowa City. I had another, a third opinion. I canceled that appointment and I sat by myself for hours and hours. I don't know how you guys feel about Jesus, but he talked to me and he said, I think, and I'd already told my kids, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm out. I'm going to live my life, sell my house, move to Florida, yada, yada. And then I, it's going to sound crazy, but I made friends with my ceiling fan because when you're down, you spend a lot of time in your bedroom. You spend a lot of time by yourself. Um, I had a lot of conversations with myself, took a lot of funny notes in the middle of the night when I couldn't sleep. Um, and I decided, plot twist, that I would do the chemo. I would do six months. I would do the 12 rounds. But it still didn't register with me that I had cancer up until just a few weeks ago. Like I didn't, I hadn't processed it yet. I didn't feel sorry for myself. I didn't have yet to really cry or get upset. I'm not angry. Um, I really feel like I'm would be doing a disservice if I didn't take the chance and do the chemo to live a little bit longer because there's many people that didn't get the chance to do the chemo. Um, my best friend's husband, like I said, died of colon cancer after 31 days of a diagnosis. And I couldn't imagine not at least trying to get more time. Colon cancer chemo is not what people expect, I guess. This is no shit, like no shit. <sighs> Hate it, over it. Go in for my chemo and get an infusion chair for four hours. Um, at first, it was a little terrifying. I don't like, I don't know, it's really just sitting still for three or four hours. I didn't really like that at all. Um, and being hooked up and watching it just drain, the poison drain into my body. I didn't, I didn't, I don't like it. And then I have to go home with a chemo pump bag for 46 more hours. So when I tell people that they don't really get it and neither did I actually, but, um, it's for this certain type of cancer. You go home, you pump for 46 hours and then you disconnect and we've decided to disconnect my, I always say port, but it's the needle from the port at home, which is going very well. The side effects of chemo. Um, I might as well be pregnant. Uh, I was, I'm very sensitive to smells and things anyway. So the chemo, I'd say around one, I probably threw up at least 25 times, but I also don't like to take my meds. Uh, I'm not a pill taker. I'm a self-care. I'll just deal with it. Um, my feelings, even if I'm sick, I just want it to deal with it. I don't want to mask it. Uh, chemo has other, other plans for me. We're going to mask the nauseous feeling as much as we can. So the first treatment didn't go well. Second treatment, I did do all of my meds, but I was still extremely, I probably vomited about 10 times and my energy level was, it was harder for me to get back to normal. So it's like I have seven, I pumped for three days and then I have four days of miserable. So it's really one week of, one week of total hell. And then I start to get better for the next week, but then it's, it's every two weeks. So by the time I get to the good, the good stuff, I have to go back into the chemo chair. I think it's super important to advocate for yourself, um, cancer related or not. Like you are the, you are the only person that's in control of your, your own feelings, your own self, how you you know, your body. If you know something's not right, it's not right. Um, I just cannot stress that enough to people. If you think something's not right, it's not right. And find someone and keep looking for people and tell, find a physician that will listen to you. You'll eventually get there. I was, I was lucky. It only took me a few times, but it took me a, a, in a span of six months to know something wasn't right. And then to be diagnosed with stage three colon cancer, it was just, it was unbelievable. And when they, 
diagnose you with cancer, it goes boom. Um, I didn't want a stage three diagnosis. I wanted a stage two, but one of my lymph nodes out of 32 came back positive for cancer cells. So I always had kind of a different outlook on life. I feel like, and I felt like prior to the cancer diagnosis, that you just really don't know how much time you have left. Like you, you don't know what's coming, what you just don't really know what's in store for you. So I've kind of lived my life like that prior to cancer, but now my friends call me a little unhinged. Like I, I know I can't just say it. I see things differently, but I literally see things differently. The colors to me are brighter. I don't quite understand that. Um, sky is bluer, the grass is greener, the snow is whiter. Um, I just see things differently, happier. I can't say that I'm happier with the cancer diagnosis, but I really think that God was trying to slow me down a notch. The hardest part about this cancer diagnosis is people kind of telling me how I'm supposed to feel. That is extremely difficult for me. Um, and I look at people differently. Like it's not that like my healthy friends are wasting their life by any means, but I'm not, not tired. Maybe my chemo weeks, I'm tired and I take a few naps in here and there. But if I've got some good time, like yesterday, I painted the kitchen with my daughter and we just like, we just go do things like go get it done. Like there's no excuses, cancer or no cancer. You got life to live. It doesn't matter how long it is. Go do it. People just go do it. My best advice would be no regrets. If you've got things to say to people, say them. If you've got things to do, do them. Uh, Everybody always waits like they do have more time, and and we don't. Uh, cancer or no cancer, like I said, go and live your best life. And I guess be selfish. Um, I'm not a selfish person. I'm very empathetic. I do a lot of things for other people. I have my whole life, and now I'm just kind of like, if I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. Um, it's okay to put yourself first. And that's a lesson that took me a really long time to figure out. And without cancer, I don't think I would have got that. I, I think I would have just continued. And I do, and I will continue to do things for people. But I got to take care of myself. So I'm saying no to going to do things is so much easier than it was before. Um, but with that being said, like I said a few minutes ago, travel, take the trips, um, don't hesitate. And love people, love yourself, love people, love your family and let go of some of the stupid shit that doesn't matter anymore. <laughs>